Imagine you're trying to water your garden or your front yard, but there's a big hole or gash in the hose as you're trying to water. That's what's going on with hemorrhagic stroke, but it's happening in the brain. So let's talk about it for a second. So let's look specifically at hemorrhagic stroke. We're going to talk about the pathophysiology and the major points. Then we'll talk about assessment, therapeutic management, and nursing care in a later lesson. A hemorrhagic stroke is a lack of blood flow to the brain tissue caused specifically by a bleed somewhere in or around the brain. Now, typically this occurs because one of the blood vessels in the brain has actually ruptured. Now, in the cardiac course, we talked about how hypertension and how much it can weaken those blood vessels, and it's the same with aneurysms. Now, you can have these weakened blood vessels and weakened outpouchings in the brain as well. Now, when one of them ruptures, blood flow beyond this point is severely diminished. Now, we know that no blood flow will always lead to death of tissue, okay? Now, think about it kind of like it's, it's like trying to water your flowers when there's a hole in the side of your hose. So not only do we lose blood flow, but now we start building up blood where it doesn't belong. And if you remember from the ICP lesson, now that's going to increase our intracranial pressure. So we're going to see this uh, elevation in our intracranial pressure with all this blood building up. Now, in addition to other neurological symptoms of stroke uh, that we'll look at in the, in the assessment lesson, these patients often complain that this is the worst headache of my life. Now, I've seen this so many times working in the neuro ICU that the patient will come in and say, I had the worst headache of my life. And it's almost every single patient with the with hemorrhagic stroke is complaining of that every single time. Now, sometimes it even wakes them out of their sleep. It's such a bad headache. When we do a CT scan, uh, we're able to see immediately this bleeding uh, in the brain. And I want you to take note of that. We can visibly see the bleeding immediately in the CT scan. And we'll talk about why that's significant later. You're not failing because you're lazy. You're failing because no one gave you a survival plan that actually works. This video will help, but it's not enough. Head over to nursing.com to get your NCLEX ready score and take a SimCLEX now to know you're ready, not just hope. Risk factors for hemorrhagic strokes, again, our hypertension is, is a huge one, as well as substance abuse, specifically cocaine. A lot of times you'll see uh, patients come in who have a history of cocaine abuse, and that is what uh, has caused this hemorrhagic stroke because both of these weaken uh, the vessel walls until they actually just burst. Uh, and that's what you're going to see in the hemorrhagic stroke. Now, we also need to consider anyone on anticoagulant therapy as being at risk, especially uh, older patients who are on morphine for their AFib, but also are losing their balance a lot because if they fall and hit their head, it could cause damage to these vessels and lead to hemorrhagic stroke, especially because their blood is not clotting like it should. So they're already on an anticoagulant therapy, then they fall and they're not able to clot and they're a really high risk for uh, these hemorrhagic strokes. There's a couple complications that are high risk in a patient with hemorrhagic stroke, and they both relate to the fact that blood, when it's somewhere it's not supposed to be, is an irritant. Okay, keep that in mind. Keep in mind for the whole body, not just the brain, blood is an irritant. Now remember, we have our brain tissue. So let's pretend this is brain tissue, okay? And that's all covered by the pia mater. So all of our brain tissue is covered by the pia mater. Then we have our skull. And the skull is lined by the dura mater. Now in between both of those, we have what's called the arachnoid layer. Now underneath this is the subarachnoid space. Now, in the subarachnoid space, there's tons of nerve endings uh, and, and blood vessels here. This is also where the majority of cerebral blood vessels actually are within the skull. Now, if you start to get blood in this space, so if one of these ruptures and you start getting blood inside this space, it's going to irritate those nerve endings. Okay, As that blood leaks out, it's going to irritate those nerve endings. Now, what do you think that's going to cause? So what we end up seeing with these patients is we start to see that they start to have seizures as well as vasospasms. 
Now, vasospasm is when the blood vessel in the brain spasms and starts to clamp down. So now not only do we have the issue of the bleed, but now you're getting ischemia because the vessels have clamped down. So what you start to see about three days after these hemorrhagic strokes is suddenly this patient starts to develop signs of a new stroke, new stroke symptoms. So you'll see the therapeutic management lessen the things we want to do to try to mitigate these risks. But I just want you to keep that in mind that, that as this blood leaks out and hits these vessels, you're going to start to see vasospasming and you'll start to see new signs of stroke about three days after hemorrhagic stroke. Please keep that in mind. Very important. Recap, a hemorrhagic stroke is a lack of blood flow to the brain due to bleeding. Some modifiable risk factors are hypertension and substance abuse due to the weakening effect they have on blood vessels. Now we need to take extra caution with patients who are on anticoagulants, especially the elderly because of their increased risk for falls and trauma. And we need to take precaution to prevent complications like seizures and vasospasms. So make sure to check out the rest of this module to learn more about how to manage stroke patients. In the nursing care lesson, we find a detailed care plan as well as a case study. So be sure to check that out. Now you guys go out and be your best self today. And as always, happy nursing. Most people fail the NCLEX because they think they're ready. Then test day hits and they completely freeze. SimCLEX simulates the NCLEX and NCLEX Ready Score tells you how ready you are to take the NCLEX. Go to nursing.com to try SimCLEX and get your NCLEX Ready Score now.